In this video, I'll demonstrate how to create two assemblies that have profile member spans. The first example will be a rural wooden fence, in which all parts will be based on the same profile. I'll draw a 6 inch diameter circle on the ground and define it as a profile called 6 inch post. I'll keep its placement point at the center and assign it a wood material. To create the post component, I'll click Build and draw up a 52 inch high post. I'll make it a component called 6 inch post, and before finishing, I'll click Set Component Axes. The origin goes at the bottom center, red goes in the red direction, and green goes along green so that blue points up. Now I'll click Create. In the Assembly dialog, I'll assign the name Rural Fence. There will be no profile members, so I'll go to Component and click Add. This component will be named Post. I'll pick it from the model, keep the default placements, and set a six foot spacing. I'll uncheck max and horizontal so that all but the last posts will be exactly six feet apart and the six feet can be along a slope. This fence will have two rails, so I'll go to span and add the first one. This will be a profile member type span called lower rail one and I can pick it from the model using the post component. Its supports are the post component and I'll keep the default pattern. I want to allow slope but not curve and the center of this post will be 14 inches off the ground. I'll click Build to see how it looks so far. I want the rails to sit in front of the posts, so I'll add a 6 inch left right offset. I also want a bit of space between rails, so I'll use a 1 inch start and end setback. For the upper rail, I'll click plus to copy the first one, assign its name, and change the vertical offset to 3 feet. Now I want to change the look of this fence to have an alternating rail pattern. I'll change both spans to the first alternating pattern. With the lower rail span in the dialog, I'll make a copy which is placed on top of the original rail by default and name this lower rail 2. This span will have the other alternating pattern. Then with upper rail 1 showing, I'll do the same thing. To build this type of fence, the rails need to extend past their posts, so for all four spans, I'll change both setbacks to negative 6 inches. I'll save this assembly and load it into a model that has this path set up. I'll select the path and build. The spans follow the slope where the path is sloped. To change what happens at the two junctions, I'll open component and add a 30 inch junction setback for the posts on either side of the junctions. By default, no rails are placed across junctions, so I'll go back to span and check cross junctions for each span. For my second example, I have this electrical tower, which is a component. Its origin is at the center of the base, its red axis points toward the assembly path direction, and the dimensions listed are from the component origin to the point where the electrical wires will connect to the tower. I'll need these dimensions later when entering offsets for the wires, which will be profile member spans. I also have a circle profile, which I'll use to define the wire spans. In the assembly dialog, I'll assign the name electrical towers. In the component tab, I'll add a component named tower and pick it from the model. I'll place these components all along the path and set the spacing at 60 feet max. Next, I'll open the span tab and add the first span. This will be wire one, the lowest wire on the tower. There is no wire profile member defined yet, so I'll click Edit Profile, zoom in and select the wire profile, and add this as a profile named wire. I'll keep the placement at the center, and I'll assign it a red material to be easier to see. Supports are listed as the tower components, since there is only one component. For pattern, I'll keep spans between all components, and I'll allow slope so that wires can follow a path in 3D. I'll leave allow curve unchecked. I'll set an 8 foot sag, and keep divisions at 10. To raise the wires up where they need to go, I'll enter the 8 foot 8 left right offset, and the 40 feet up down offset. To test things out, I'll select this curved path and build. Let's say that these towers are supposed to be facing the other way. I could change their axes, or start over and select the assembly path in the reverse direction. Or I could go back to the component and rotate them all 180 degrees. 
When I select the assembly and apply changes, the towers turn, but the wires remain in place. To fix this, I'll go back to the span and glue it to its supports. Now I can add a new span called wire 2, which is a copy of wire 1. The only change is the vertical offset of 52 feet. And a third wire will have an offset of 64 feet. After applying, here's my electrical tower assembly. In the next video, I'll cover assembly spans that are comprised of components.